going on, everybody? It is your boy, Bear Dog, back with another New York Giants video. Shout out to whoever got me this hat. I still don't know who got me the hat and the shirt. So whoever sent this to me uh, as a, for a birthday present or just to send it to me, thank you very much. I, I never figured out who sent me this hat, but thank you. I love it. So I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you guys and girls watching. Thank you so much. Hopefully your weekend is going well. It is Saturday morning. I just finished doing shoulders and running some cardio in the gym. Just ate breakfast. I'm ready to knock this video out of the park. If you guys could do me a favor and hit the like button, that'd be great. Knock the like button out of the park. It's free. Costs nothing, but it helps out the video huge. Also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that'd be great too. We're closing in on 100K. A lot of Giants content coming up. Obviously, the Giants are in full force at training camp. We have a preseason game on Thursday night. Talking Giants will be Monday. Chris is going to the game. Here goes my camera getting dark again. Move forward. Doesn't help. Move my hand. Whatever. Um, Chris is going to the Mets game today and tomorrow. So we're going to do Talking Giants on Monday. I am thinking maybe streaming the Yankee game tomorrow. It's 2.15. I don't know if I'm doing anything tomorrow. If I'm home, I might just stream the Yankees-Cardinals uh, game three. Anyway, let's talk about the New York Giants. They had Fan Fest last night. I wish I could be there. I don't live close to the city, so that's like impossible for me to get there. One of these years, uh, maybe I'll get down there because it just it seems like a lot of fun. It really does. The Giants trained up in my area for 17 years from 1996 to 2012. I miss them. Uh, I loved being able to go to training camp and watching them practice. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I jokingly always say, you know, since they left Albany, they've been really bad. They left here in 2012. They were 9-7 and seven in 2012. And since they stopped coming up here, they've had one winning season. So um, Coach Dable, uh, SUNY Albany, Giants franchise. Hello. Uh, can we get them back up here uh, in Albany? at least for a couple of weeks, that'd be nice. Anyway, I want to talk about the receiving core for the New York Giants today. Um, listen, man, Kadarius Toney, uh, he's impressive, right? I mean, we, we've seen the talent. Even if it was just in a very, very small window, we've seen what the man can do. Uh, I'm not going to compare him to Odell. I'm not going to say he's going to be Odell Beckham because that's a really lofty praise. But the way he's shifty, the way he can make moves, the way he can get open, the way he can make defenders miss, that quick twitch, that that twitchiness, that that ability to make defenders miss in the secondary and turn a seven-yard play into a 70 yard play. We did see that from Odell Beckham. Now we want Kadarius Tony to be healthy in training camp so far. He's been very fresh, very healthy. He looks explosive. Saquon Barkley looks explosive too. It's a word they've been using, which is awesome. Uh, we'll talk about Saquon Barkley in another video, but very impressed with Kadarius Tony. A lot of people said he was the X factor going into the season and he's been awesome. How good can Kadarius, can can how good could Kadarius Tony? I can't talk today. How well could Kadarius Tony, how well can he do this year? I, I cannot talk. I don't know what the hell is going on. But how well can Kadarius Tony be uh, this season if he is 100% healthy? He plays 17 games. Is this a guy that could get you 80 receptions, 75 receptions, and over 1,000 yards um, with eight, nine touchdowns? Um, obviously, the talent is there. I feel very good this year. Last year, you know, he dealt with the COVID. He dealt with the death in his family. He wasn't there in practice. He was injured. He had weird things going on. This year, he seems to be 100% vested. Brian Dables lined him up in a wildcat, talked about maybe having him throw the ball. He was fielding punts. So he's very open to a lot of different things um, in the offense and being very versatile, which is a good thing. So Kadarius Toney obviously is going to be a big factor in the Giants passing game. And I'm I'm optimistic that he could be really good. By the way, speaking of optimistic, shout out to my guy Fisk Vegas for coming on the channel the other night. We had a really good debate and discussion about Daniel Jones. And I'm going to be honest, uh, Fisk, you, you, you moved my meter a little bit for the optimism. You moved, I, I got to give you credit. You moved it up a little bit. I'm a little bit more optimistic than I was going into the year. And it's because of the receiving core, to be honest with you. Kenny Galladay, we paid this guy $72 million for four years. Thought we were getting a, a Pro Bowl receiver, a big target from Detroit. He was terrible last year. There's no way fans or butts about it. He wasn't good. He was injured, didn't have a touchdown, had 500 yards receiving. That is not what we paid the man for. Started off a little bit sluggish in training camp, didn't look good. But this week, Kenny Galladay looks like the guy that we were supposed to get from Detroit. He could be huge 
for the New York Giants. And you have a guy like Kadarius Toney that can open up the middle of the field, and then you allow Galladay some one-on-ones on the outside. Galladay should be able to go up and win those 50-50 balls. If Brian Dayball wants Daniel Jones to take some chances and throw the ball down the field, Kenny Galladay could definitely be an integral part of what we do, especially in the red zone. I was excited that we got Kenny Galladay because I'm like, he's a big target. This will help Daniel Jones in the red zone. Last year, it just didn't pan out. But this year, with all the pre-snap motion and all the confusion it could cause on the defensive side of the football, I do feel like if Kenny Galladay is healthy, that Kenny Galladay could be a big part of what we do here. It's good to see him getting a rapport with Daniel Jones because they really didn't build the chemistry last year. And even at the beginning of training camp, the first week, it didn't look like they really had anything. But this week, you're starting to see them connect a lot more. Obviously, had a really nice touchdown over Adore Jackson the other day. So again, when you see guys like Kadarius Tony and Kenny Galladay playing the way they are. And again, it's just practice, so you can't get too high or too low on practice. I know guys are like, oh, you're killing Daniel Jones. And I always say, I'm not killing Daniel Jones. I'm just talking about what Daniel Jones is doing in practice. By the way, real quick, he was 15 out of 26 last night. He started off a bit slow, and he finished strong, in case anybody was wondering about that. But um, I'm excited. I think that Kenny Galladay, if they could stay healthy, I definitely think that Kadarius Toney and Kenny Galladay could be a massive force uh, in the passing game, especially if we're able to run the ball and keep defenses honest, I feel like both of those guys can have a very productive year. Now, I saved the best for last. It's Wandale Robinson. When Wandale was drafted in the second round, I know a lot of Giants fans were like, what the hell, Joe Shane? What are you doing? What are you doing? Me, I was, I was scratching my head. And I said, huh? Weird. I said, that's a weird pick. So many other directions they could have went. I'm like, wow. They went Wandale Robinson. I know much about Wandale Robinson. I don't watch a lot of Kentucky football. I watch I watch some Kentucky football. It's not the SEC team that I choose to watch. There's a lot of Georgia, a lot of Alabama, LSU, those type of teams. But I'm going to start watching Kentucky a lot this year since there's all the talk about Will Levis coming here. Guy puts mayonnaise in his coffee. I don't want – listen, I don't want Will Levis here. I hate mayonnaise. How the hell are you going to put mayonnaise in your coffee? What's wrong with you? Anyway, I digress. Wandale Robinson has looked like the best receiver of the three and he had another nice 32 yard catch and run last night again he's got that Kadarius Tony factor he's small Kadarius Tony's a little bit taller than Wandell but Wandell Robinson small could kind of get lost out there again you get the ball out you get the ball in your playmaker's hands Wandell Robinson looks a very, very explosive very twitchy shifty all that good stuff again you get him with Kadarius Tony, you get Robinson and Tony out there, a couple of uh, guys that can really run, you know, they're explosive. They may not have the fastest 40 time, but these guys were able to make defenders miss, make big plays, yak the yards after the catch. I'm very impressed with Wandale Robinson so far. I think he has been awesome. I think he's been one of the best players in Giants training camp. And, you know, for all the question marks that the Giants had coming into the year, with the receiving core, and yes, there's still going to be questions, guys. I mean, we're two weeks into training camp, right? So, we again, you can't get too high or too low. But if these three guys can stay healthy and you see the way they're practicing right now, you see what they are when they're healthy. It's got to be encouraging as a Giants fan to say, God, we got three guys right there. Right there. We got three guys right there. So let's not go back there. But uh, we have three receivers that really can make a lot of plays, and they all have different skill sets. Now, Robinson and Kadarius Tone are kind of similar. Obviously, Kenny Galladay is the big body receiver that's going to go up, get the contested catches, hopefully get a lot more touchdowns. He had zero touchdowns. He has as many touchdowns as I did last year. So he should be able to uh, be a little bit more productive in the red zone. But I do think having guys like Wandale Robinson and Kadarius Tony down inside the red zone where they can catch a three-yard pass, make defenders miss, and get into the end zone, that will open up a lot of one-on-ones on the outside for Kenny Galladay. And I didn't even mention Daniel Bellinger, who's been the best tight end uh, that we've had so far. Looks like he's going to be the starter uh, right away. So, again, I'm not expecting a lot out of Daniel Bellinger. All I can say about Bellinger is when the ball's went his way, he's caught it. And he's got to practice his blocking a little bit better. But, um, you know, the Buffalo Bills, they were never big into getting their tight end as like an offensive weapon. We got enough offensive weapons. You got Barkley. You got those three receivers I just mentioned. Darius Slayton, I don't really know if he's going to make the team. Sterling Shepard, he's always injured. I, I can't really count on Shepard. It's unfortunate. I love Sterling Shepard, but I, I can't count on the guy. But the three receivers that have showed up in camp, they've been healthy. I'm very encouraged about Kenny Galladay this week because I, I'm, you know, I was worried. I'm like, God, we spent all this money on this guy and he hasn't done anything and he's not looking good. And him and Daniel Jones don't have any kind of connection. But this week it did look like they were really starting to click. So again, we're two weeks in a training camp. I'm not going to get too high or too low, but 
I'm impressed with the Giants wide receivers. I would love to know your opinion. Do you think the Giants wide receiving core can be legitimate this year? And again, this is all things saying that they stay healthy. Do you think that they can be a threat? Do you think the Giants passing game can actually be something this year? These three guys healthy, I really do believe that they can be a, an absolute force uh, in the passing game. And again, everything's predicated off the run. They all work together. It's like when you go working out at the gym, right? All the muscles intertwine with one another. It's mind-muscle connection. Well, it's the same thing with the Giants offense. It's going to be mind-muscle connection. Everybody's going to be able to build off one another. That includes the offensive line. So I'm encouraged. We're going to get a lot more, not, maybe not a lot more, but we're going to know more Thursday you know, when they have the preseason game, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how Dable uses the guys, how much he starters play, because Joe Judge last year didn't play these guys. He did not play the guys in training camp, which are so stupid. It's like, oh, they don't need to practice. Yes, they do. And especially, guys, you're, you have a new system, so you want to get acclimated to it, as many reps as you can get. You want Daniel Jones out there in game situations. Yes, I know the defense is going to be base 4-3 or base 3-4, vanilla. You're not going to see a lot of different looks. He's not going to play a ton. But you want Daniel Jones to get comfortable Comfortable in day ball system. The best way to do that is to go against an NFL defense. Same thing with Wandale Robinson. He's a rookie. Let him get out there. Let him get his feet underneath him. Let him get acclimated to the size and speed of NFL cornerbacks. Let Connie Gale and Kadarius Tony, who didn't play a lot last year, let them get their football legs. Let them get in football shape. This is about getting in shape. This is about getting in shape and honing your craft and getting ready for week one. We don't want to hear the first four weeks are an extension of the preseason. That's hogwash. So I expect these guys to play some, not a ton in week one. I do expect an entire half in game two, maybe into the third quarter, maybe series into the third quarter, and maybe a series in game three. But I would expect, and again, I don't know what Coach Dable is going to do, but I expect the Giants to play their starters for a quarter. That's what I'm, at least that's what I'm hoping. At least two series, if not a quarter. I would like to see multiple series. Again, you want to get Daniel Jones to report with Galladay. He was hurt a lot last year. Jones was hurt a lot last year. It's not like they got to work together. Same thing with Kadarius Tony and obviously Wandale being a rookie. Again, this is about getting in football shape. This is about getting your timing down. This is about practicing the little things against an NFL defense. I'm encouraged about the Giants wide receiving core. I would love to know your opinions on it. So please let me know in the comment section. Sorry I babbled for 12 minutes. If you made it this far, you're an absolute legend. Do me a favor, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. Share this video out with a Giants fan. We're getting close to 100,000. It'd be cool to get there, hopefully, in the middle of the season. We will. So tell anybody you know about the bad diggity dizzle. The like and subscribe are free. I appreciate you watching. Uh, and if I don't do the Yankees tomorrow, uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Bad diggity dizzle. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm out. Peace.